for the Spanjo Hoopercast. It's Phoebe getting to introduce today, which is why I whispered at you. Who's this over here? This is Caitlin over this side. Um, I thought today we should really talk about actual physical hula hoops. That would be amazing. Like the actual circle. We, we say that we talk it. about hula hoops, but now we're actually going to talk about hula hoops. <laughs> so um, I'm going to ask you, do you actually know how many hula hoops you have in your collection? You're asking me? Yeah. No, I don't. I have a lot. <laughs> but it, it doesn't really count for me because I'm a hula hoop teacher. So I have literally Oh, so you're not including the class hundreds. hoops. No. That's fair. So I like have- personal collection, still <sighs> don't know, do you? Oh, so, okay, so I have two hoops that I use. But I ha- – they – I. I don't know how to explain that. You've got your go-to hoops that you use very often. I sub them out though. Like I literally, my personal stack is my class stack. Oh. I use any hoops. <laughs> I don't, I don't have an, okay, so let's just put it this way. I don't have an attachment to hoops anymore. I have a, an attachment to a hoop size and um, a certain type of tape because I have so many hoops that I just use whatever, but only go to those two sizes. Whatever's on hand. Basically. Very cool. I know, but some people do have, get very attached to certain hoops in their hoop stack. I used to give my hoop names. Oh, that's so cute. We had the goblin. That was one of my <laughs> first hoops. He was green. <laughs> that makes sense. I see what, you, what you're getting at. Yeah. I've got um, the glitter bomb oh. because it's it uses the really fancy tape. So there, there are hoops that I do have a specific preciousness with, but that's because the tape is really expensive. <laughs> so I'm not going to lend that one out because it – the tape costs like so much dollars a roll. It's so heartbreaking, isn't it? When you have a hula hoop that is beautiful and it gets its first scratch. It's, I, I imagine it to be like, I don't have children, but I imagine it to be like, if you, your child falls over and they scuff their knee, they get a graze. You're like, no, that perfect human. I'm just watching it slowly degrade until it's all day. <laughs> degrade. Well, I don't know. That is. <laughs> Sorry. I've never been super maternal. That was good analogy i'm sure i'm assuming that's exactly what it's like because i don't have children either well you know i'm coming at it from the whole hip perspective i would love to hear the feedback from actual mothers and fathers out there what, like, who would like to be able to, who would be able to tell us if that is accurate well because like they come out perfect right and then it's a carbon-based life form yeah, so it ages babies heal hoops don't oh are you saying hoops are more valuable than babies <laughs> Let's change the subject before I get Immediately. in trouble. <laughs> okay, what are we talking about? We're talking about our hoop collection. So you'll probably get to the point where you want to hoop somewhere else. Maybe you've finished all your classes. You've gone to the extent where there's no more class that you can take. What space do you have to practice your hooping in if you have a small place? You want to go outside. You want to go to a studio. You want to go to like a gym where there's space. You got to take it somewhere. How do you do that? How do I do that? Yeah. I stuff it into the back of my car. And here's the thing. When I, before I became a hooper, I, I, like, I didn't know that I was going to be a hooper when I bought this tiny car and I have to stuff heaps of hoops into the back of it Mm. and it's, it's ruined from it. It's, I'm not going to be able to resell it because of how many hoops I've shoved in there. Yeah. It's bad. But aside from that, sometimes I take travel hoops. Oh yeah. That's a thing. Yeah. That's a thing. People ask for travel hoops. People ask me about travel hoops a lot. Um, I, I don't have any. Like I have some that have a push button coil because that's how they came, but they're not sectional. I don't coil them down at all because I just take them full size everywhere I go. Okay. So let's talk about travel hoops then. So there are generally two different kinds of travel hoops. The the sectional one, like you just mentioned, which is um, the push buttons, they usually break down into two or more pieces, Yeah. sometimes six. And then they would fit, once you've taken all the pieces apart, you can put them in luggage um, then you also have the coil down ones, mm. which can collapse. Um, so you collapse entirely on themselves if they're big enough. So you mm. wrap them down into a tight little circle, which you could wear as a cute little bag across your shoulder. Yeah. I think that's adorable. I do like the look of that. Or you can join two of them together and wrap them down so they're not as, not as much pressure if they're small hoops mm. on a tiny little <laughs> so circle. Like springs open. Yeah, or just snaps. That's, oh, that that's worse. It is much worse, yeah. Actually <laughs> – I don't know. You can. You could seriously hurt yourself if you if a hoop if you coil it down and, tight enough and it sprung open and Ooh. hit you in the face or something. I don't like the sound of that. Yeah, be careful, guys. Be careful, everybody. This is our PSA to be careful with the hoop faceness. <laughs> I I feel like maybe one of the reasons I don't have any travel hoops is because I don't go anywhere. Oh. Like I don't. When I went 
Oh, no, I did take them. I did take them. Like, I usually drive them places if it's too far away or if there's too many people on the train and I don't want to annoy the people on the train by being like a human with bulky items, especially in peak hour. But I usually just put them in the car. I have taken them to other countries. That is a thing, but it can be really tricky. Okay, so let's talk about then how how you can take hoops to other countries because if you if you do want to take a single hoop and you don't mind the travel hoop option, you can carry them on as luggage potentially, yeah. like as carry on. Though I want to talk about this, you want to make sure maybe check with your airline first because different airlines have different policies on whether um, break apart hoops or coil down hoops are considered. You know, carry on luggage. Yeah, I actually believe it is dependent on who is working that day. Definitely. And I believe it's also dependent on who is the flight attendant that day because you can get people who are like, you can't have that. You shouldn't have that. You shouldn't have been let in with that. And you can possibly have checked with the airline before and they've been like, as long as it fits the measurements. But yeah. then they're not happy with you. My my experience, with, well, my uh, thoughts on this are I will only do that if I'm willing to lose the hoop. So if I'm if I'm willing to have the the risk of them making me throw it away, mm. then that's what I'll do. If not, check it with as checked luggage, either your travel hoops or you can also just take your full size hoops. Yeah, it, um, a lot of the time they'll need to be considered oversized baggage. Yes, some airlines will charge you for oversized baggage. Some mm. airlines will not. Do a lot of research before you go anywhere on a plane with your hoops and be prepared that they might not let you do it on the day. Yeah. You really, really friggin' expensive ones, consider not taking them. Yeah. I'm really, I'm really scared of everything like that though. I always breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief when my when my checked hoops arrive safely. <laughs> you see them come out? <laughs> at, the, at the arrival section of the luggage, um, especially the LEDs when traveling. Do you bubble wrap them? Those. Yeah, so I – well, I used to bubble wrap them. I've traveled a couple of times where I've wrapped them in bubble wrap, um, but now I just use a hoop huggy. So hoop huggy. Yeah. Hoop huggy. Yeah, so it's like a, hoop it's like a giant scrunchie that's mm-hmm. open. But mm-hmm. you put them around hoops. Is that how you describe a hoop buggy? Oh, uh, I know what you mean. I've seen – yeah, they, they, they're kind of like one big cylinder of fabric and the bottom and top of the cylinder, the inside edges, have elastic. Yeah, so it's like you wrap it around. And it elasticizes – elasticizes it itself. Holds everything together. Yeah, that's cute. I sewed one by myself. Aww. It was the first thing that I – it's the only thing that I've used my sewing machine for – and look, I was pretty proud of my efforts, but you can also buy them on Etsy. Yeah, sell your sewing machine. <laughs> what? <laughs> I just have this is this is purely comes from me not knowing whether or not to sell my sewing machine. It's like if you don't use it, get rid of it. I'm on this really hard line. Oh, get rid of the shit you don't need. That's all right. Well, I thought you were just making a comment about how ugly my hoop huggy is. No, I don't remember what he looks like. It's got Pokemon on it. Oh, that's it's bloody got great. Really, really st- not straight stitching. But it's it does the job. It's personalized for you. You can go and buy hoop huggies on Etsy. Um, go and search hoop huggy, <laughs> and someone that is actually very good at sewing. sewing will make one for you. Yeah, no, in no way comment on your sewing skills. Just to comment on my need to downsize my life. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I'm not that high tech. I just um I get like a cord. Sometimes it's material that has been on presents that people have given to me, like ribbons and shit, and I just, like, tie it up with one strand Mm. (laughs) to keep it together. Um, Yeah. I have – I remember putting my LEDs in oversized luggage, and I was really really proud of myself because I charged them the day before I was going to go somewhere, and I didn't fix the switch closed (laughs) – before they went in the baggage and they'd been on the entire flight. Ooh. So all my all my charging was for naught. Did you need them to be charged when you'd arrived oh, or was it kind okay of. Like for a performance? Nah, we had time to charge them, but I was just like, ah, oh, come on. Came out and there was this dim red Darth dying LED glow coming mm. out of the bubble wrap. That probably would have been eerie for the security, the the. It's a portal to another dimension and it's not a good one. (laughs) They don't know that. Hoops are magical portals. I would have liked it not to be run down. That's fine. Okay. You you said that you have to shove a bunch of hoops in your car. I um, also have this issue. I actually purchase cars based on if my hoops will fit and how many will fit. So I take 
my car full of hoops along and I check if one is going to fit at every angle mm. through the little hatchback of the Smart. car that I want. <laughs> <laughs> Smart. Um, but, uh, yeah, on that note, having them in the car, they are subject to temperature. <laughs> yes. So it's getting hotter here now in Australia where we're coming from and that means with the heat and the glorious sunshine comes – risks to your hoops in cars let's get serious voice risk to your hoop in a car cars are like ovens in the sun and that means that your little plastic hoops inside are going to melt and warp if you leave them in there in extreme temperatures yeah that that hoop is not going to be a flat circle anymore (laughs) it'll also probably be really sticky if you've got grip tape on your hoops. oh the glue seeps (laughs) out and then if you try and give them to people to use in a class they're like oh i don't want to put this on my body Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's really (laughs) gross um so if you can help it don't leave your hoops in the car but what do you do phoebe if your hoop has gone a bit weird i just leave it out for a while let it walk. But okay, so you leave it on a flat surface. It's got to be flat. Um, there'll probably be some little pockets where it's not touching the ground, where it's wonky. Just leave it in the sun for a while. Should come normal. Is that what you do? Um, I find that it needs to be really quite sunny, very okay. hot for that to work. And so, yeah, I'll leave it out for a little while. And then um, once it's kind of gotten a bit warm or I could, or you might want to heat it with a hairdryer to speed up this process. Heat guns exist. Oh, yeah, but you've got to be very careful with those because they are very hot and they will melt the hoop if you hold them too close. Yeah, I I tried it. (laughs) (laughs) They're extremely hot. So hair dryer, maybe, and then just pop it under your mattress, between the mattress and the bed. Oh! And then, like, sleep on it for a night or two. And that that usually helps a fair bit. Yeah, so you've got to let it re-soften. Yeah. Also, if they're not too crazy, just hooping with them again. Um, yeah. On body, some quite vigorous. <laughs> <laughs> She's doing the motions. Like she <laughs> went into a surfboard stance, ladies and gentlemen. Vigorous, multiple pelvic thrusts. <laughs> this is how it's done. I um, bring, they can't miss that. You furiously hula hoop with it on your body, and that, that does actually help to even it out over time. Centripetal force. Mm. Mm. Science. Science. It's science. <laughs> I say that when I don't know anything about the science behind it. That's exactly <laughs> my, <laughs> yeah. my go-to as well. I had this happen. I um, wanted to go on a holiday with a bunch of friends and I still – I didn't want to shirk my training. I was trying to get splits at the time. So I had to take four hoops with me, four heavy hoops minimum. And I put them on roof racks on the top of the car because there were people taking up all of the other chairs because I'm nice and I drove – a fair amount of us and I got there and they had warped and sunk <laughs> quite considerably but did the sunshine thing and it was okay I just had to kind of deal with the glue dealing with the glue do you always dealing with the glue get that <sighs> alcohol um wipes or stuff to yeah. remove it apparently that's quite good the other thing the other thing to quickly mention um and we don't have heaps of experience with this because again we're in Australia but at the other end of the spectrum is Extreme cold. Oh, yeah. And this can make your hoops very brittle and crack. Um, I know I've had it happen to a couple of my hoops when it's been very, very cold. And they're usually older hoops, like, mind you. It doesn't snow where we are. But, yeah, they can crack if they get too cold. And it makes them quite jagged um, and dangerous. Heavens to Betsy. (laughs) (laughs) She made claw hands when she said jagged. I got the meaning. Mm. Yeah, that – yeah, I hadn't um, – I've not had that happen to me. You probably take better care of your stuff than I do. I tend to take them out of the car. I <laughs> tend to bring them inside. I cannot be bothered. <laughs> yeah, I, I do like lug up like 40 and I also in don't, the elevator. I'm not a nice like friend where I'm driving people around. I have hoops in the back of my car. <laughs> I'm like, not a nice friend, <laughs> you know, dash Caitlin. I, like, you have to be pretty special in my book <laughs> for me to be bothered taking all of oh, the 100 oh, hoops out of the back of the car. I have to talk about this. If I'm having a very asocial day or I need myself time and I know I'm going somewhere and I feel like people are liable to want a lift home somewhere out of the way, I will make sure I leave as many hoops in the car as possible (laughs) because I need to be in the car by myself because I'm stressed and I don't want to talk to anyone. I love that, like, I love that that's a thing. I love that you also just shared it on a public podcast so now we all know. (laughs) <laughs> well, you'll know how much I like you if there's hoops in the car. And you're asking for that. I'm so sorry. Wait, did you I, do I, I just can't. Purpose? There's so many hoops you won't fit. <laughs> what a what a pity. I, <laughs> now I know. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to bring up a drastic change of topic so that I don't, don't get in too much trouble from my friends. Drastic change of topic. 
This is something that is, I consider it a game changer. I took a workshop from Tiki Hoops. It was like a three hoop multiple extravaganza workshop. Good. It was amazing. She's got a really lovely energy, but she has this um, hoop, hoop wrap. She yeah. gets a duvet cover. I don't know what everyone calls it. Duvet, duna, bedspread. Mm. One of those like cotton covers that fully encloses a duvet. And she has this way of wrapping it around the hoops that actually turns it into a backpack for a really big amount of hoops. It is super cute. Yeah. And there's a video. So we're going to obviously link you guys to it because if you want to carry a bunch around and you don't want to have them slipping off your shoulders, backpack it, tiki hoops, hoop. Yeah. She, what does she call it? Hoop what, wrap? I think. Did she call it a hoop wrap or a hoop? I think she called it a hoop backpack. Uh, cool. Yeah. But you basically open it up, put the hoops inside, tie, tie it across it a the corners. Way. And you can just carry it like that or Sling it over get your inside shoulder. of it. Yeah, and off you go. That's brilliant. So we're going to link that to y'all so you have it. Mm. Thank you, Tiki. All right, baby. What are our hot hoop tracks? Our hot hoop tracks today. We have a submission. I love when we have a submission. This is from Crystal. She sent us a few, but we chose this one because we liked it. It is Pumped Up by Klingander, which I think is how you say it. I looked it up and immediately forgot. Where are they from? Oh, bloody Sweden. Sweden? I've got no idea. I think it is a word in Swedish. Don't remember what you said it was. I- I'm so sorry if I've gotten it wrong and I'm accidentally offending someone by mixing up languages. Cool. It's a good song though. It, it is was, a good it song. It was like a bit of a mix. Bit um, of a cover, a mo- bit of a mix. I want to talk about mine. Go. Mine is called Whale and it's by a group called Yellow and I think it is so pleasant. I use this to cool down. Sometimes I use it to make the class cool down because its lyrics are super cute. It's about a whale on the ocean. Too cute. I, I know. need to go and listen to that. I love whales. Oh, well, this is one for you. <laughs> What's yours? Tell me. Uh, mine, okay, mine is called Circle um, and it's by Laura Scarborough. Now, this is this is a cool song because it's actually about hula hoops. Laura is a hooper. Um, it's, this song's been around for quite a while. She's, has, she's a bit of an OG, OG so hooper. Good. It's original super gangster. Good. And um, it's about <laughs> hula hoops. And the video clip has her looking fabulous in stripes. Socks? Yeah, stripey, I stripey outfit, rolling around on stripey hula hoops. It's very Perfect. That cool. appeals to so many of my sensibilities. <laughs> and many of our listeners, I would imagine. I hope so. Cool. Well, let's leave. Let's leave. Let's leave.